Hey you guys, today we're talking about neem oil and how you can use it to effectively treat spider mites on a lot of these fuzzy leafed anthuriums and philodendrons. Okay, if you look closely here and you actually you don't have to look that closely, right here is a bunch of leaf damage on this anthurium bessier. I don't know if I'm saying that right, bessiaca. You can see the spider mite tracks all over that leaf. And this leaf kind of all over is covered. And it's really frustrating because this is a brand new leaf and this plant has been completely safe from mites up until now. But enter the only thing we use in the garden to treat spider mites is concentrated neem oil that contains azadiractin. You don't have to buy it from us, but we do sell it in the 10 mil version of something affordable for you guys at home in a smaller garden. And then we also have a 60 ml bottle. So these fuzzy philodendrons like Splendid or Melanochrysum, Varicosum, they are very susceptible to spider mites. Just, I don't know, for whatever reason, spider mites just love them. And almost the whole Anthurium family. Monstera has been like very little problems I've found. I've had thrips once. But the best way to treat plants of this size is to do a neem drench. So we're gonna use nine mLs per quart. So this is a half of a quart. So I'm gonna use four and a half mLs of neem concentrate in this. So I have my neem concentrate, which I'm going to do four and a half mls and so that we're not wasting any of this really valuable liquid we're going to strain it off after we do our dunk and we're going to use it in a spray bottle so we have our neem solution i'm using this twice a week right now it's kind of warm in our greenhouse and spider mites love warm temperatures for reproducing so they are rampant right now on a bunch of these anthuriums we have brought in and it's kind of a bummer but i'm having to spray about twice a week to keep them at bay and even so on the anthuriums, they're still attacking those fuzzy leaves. So when we go ahead and treat this one, I actually just took a piece of paper, put a cut in it, and I'm gonna cover my media. In this case, it's moss, because I'm gonna have to turn this plant upside down. You can also do this in LECA, but you really just wanna hold the media over the pot so that I can turn the plant upside down without everything falling out. So what you're literally going to do is submerge each one of the leaves. Depending on the container, you can also use a better, wider container for this. But what I end up doing is just taking the whole plant and dunking it inside of the neem solution. There's something about it that just tends to work better than spraying because it's complete submersion. Maybe it's actually drowning those little things, which I wouldn't mind honestly at this point because it's very frustrating to have a bad spider mite outbreak. And there you have your complete dripping wet plant and I can put this guy back. And see that didn't even use that much neem solution. Next up, we're gonna do the root drench solution on this pink princess philodendron that at times has had different root bugs in it. I don't know if it has any right now, but it's always a good prevention to do a root drench and fight those soil dwelling insects. So this is a much smaller root mass than I was anticipating for this plant. There might be something going on with that one, but it's as simple as just putting the entire plant. At this point, I can just stick the whole thing under the water. I'll do the root side, do about five or 10 seconds for it. And then I'm gonna take the whole plant and dunk it all the way in. Again, give it a few seconds. And that just gives me confidence that I have attacked all of the bugs on the plant. I won't do this root drench and total plant drench every week, but the more I do it, the less bugs I have. So that's a great data point. If you have bigger plants, you can obviously use different size containers to fill up a big batch, maybe a gallon of this neem solution to dunk your bigger plants into, or even a big bin, but that's gonna take a lot of concentrated neem solution and it is expensive at the concentrated level. So what we're gonna do is just take our concentrated neem, make sure there's no dirt or dust in it, strain it out if there is, because it will clog your sprayer and just a Home Depot sprayer and pour that back into it. We mix up an original 500 mLs and it looks like on this bottle, we still have about 500 mLs. So it didn't take much neem solution to do the dunks. We did a root dunk and a leaf dunk. And now for our massive plants that can't fit inside of a container, just really aggressively, I put it on the sharpest spray setting, shoot the front and most importantly, the back sides of the leaves. So I'm gonna hit the front sides and just really drench that leaf as if I had it under the water. Because ideally I'd be able to sink this plant under a neem solution, but it's just too big. But soak the stems. And while I'm there, I'm gonna soak down into the rocks and make sure to get the backsides really well. 
And they love brand new leaves, so spray down all of your newest leaves with your neem spray. I don't know why, they just love the fuzzy leafed plants. Some leaves and some plants are just more susceptible to spider mites. And Anthurium as a whole genus is completely susceptible to them. And all your fuzzy philodendrons. Anything with that velvety leaf, watch out for spider mites. So spray these guys down twice a week on the front sides and the back sides of your fuzzy philodendron. You can see this one has all this leaf damage all over the front side. Philodendron I've found are more susceptible to mites than even Monstera, but maybe I'll make a video on that in specifics, the difference in caring for Monstera versus Philodendron, but I would say on average, Monstera roots, pests, nutrition, just everything are easier to take care of than almost every houseplant, but definitely philodendron. Still love the philodendrons, it's a bigger family, but those monsteras just are so simple and grow so fast. So spray back sides, front side with a very harsh spray ideally to knock off those bugs and suffocate them with that neem oil. Also, word to the wise, watch out on your syngoniums. I found, I guess the main pattern is soft leafed plants are just really tasty to spider mites. So these thicker leaf monsteras, like with a tougher, thicker leaf, just aren't tasty. But on syngoniums, this softer leaf is tasty to spider mites. So soft thin leaf, Paraiso Verde, things like that, Burl Marks, spray them down with neem consistently. Do it proactively so that you're not fighting an issue later on. Because after a certain point, you have to remove the leaf. Once it has too many eggs and too many webs and too many marks on it, you need to remove that leaf and get those mites and those eggs out of the way because they have a very fast reproductive system, especially in the summer. So be careful with spider mites, watch out on your philodendrons, watch out on your syngoniums. There's a bunch of weak neem oil on the health food side of the market, but you wanna make sure that you use pesticide grade organic or MRI so this is safe for around human use and I've read the studies, it is indeed safe to be around babies and adults and it won't even harm animals. Go ahead and check out neem as an effective way to fight just about any bug and definitely my go-to for fighting spider mites. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you have an awesome day and we'll see you next Saturday for another video on houseplants.